Good morning. It's good to see everyone here. And uh, must be summertime. There's, uh, you guys can move up if you would like to. I mean, <laughs> ushers, okay, from now on, just bring them down toward the front, okay? Yep. <laughs> Heritage Community Worship Service will take place this Thursday, 6 p.m. Everyone is invited to come worship with Pastor Dave and the residents, and they love to have visitors. Yes, yes, yes. Youth Summer Camp for grades 7 through 12 will be July 10th through 14th at Camp Nova near Happy, Texas. This should be very happy, right? Yeah. See Jeremy to register or for more information. Boy Scout Troop 163 has three scouts who need help to attend summer camp this year. If anyone would like to help these scouts, you may make a check out to the church with the designation of BSA Camp, and we'll pass it on to the scouts. And license plates are in the back, are in the front, foyer, uh, they're free. Guyman for Christ, license plates for anyone to take, grab one on your way out. And there's ladies Bible study that meets Wednesday at 6 p.m., Thursdays at 10 a.m. Both are down in the fellowship hall. It's a great group of women and they invite you to join them. Yes. Methodist men's breakfast Yum. is held every Wednesday morning from 6.30 to 7.30 a.m. in the fellowship hall. Invite a friend and join them for good food, fellowship and devotion. Early Watch Prayer Group meets for fellowship, worship, intercession, Monday through Saturday mornings, 5 a.m. in the chapel. And later, Watch Prayer Group meets Monday evenings at 6 p.m. Come and join either group. So on Mondays, you can get a double dose. I mean, you can come early and come late, too. So. And the visitors, if you're here, please leave your contact information on one of the visitor cards found in the pew. Pastor Dave would like to follow up with you, and thank you for being here. If you'd like to receive our newsletter twice a month, get, please get in touch with the church office so we can add you to our mailing list. In class meetings, please visit with Pastor Dave about ways you can belong to and participate in covenant prayer and share group in daily devotions pastor dave encourages everyone to enjoy a quiet time with god each day yes, yes, yes. now i've got a note here mindy and sabrina are there you all coming up front okay Good morning. Good morning. I don't know why. I'm a little more ner little bit more nervous than I was in the first service for some reason. Okay. Mindy and I wanted to update our church family about our new senior adult daycare center that we're opening. It's our mission to provide quality and professional care for seniors who can't stay at home, who need maybe more structure and activities. But it's just as important for us to provide some relief for the uh, caregivers to make sure that they're taking care of themselves and that they need get a little break. Mindy, who is our activities director, um, we're equal partners in this little endeavor of ours. And um, you may see Mindy on a more, more regular basis day to day um, because she'll be there more and I still will be working at my other jobs. Uh, but our hours will be 7.45 in the morning till 5.15, so if you have to drop them off before you go to work and then have time to pick them up. We'll have CNAs and CMAs, and we'll have a nurse who'll oversee um, those CNAs and CMAs, as well as we have a dietitian who is approving our meals and such things as that. Some of the activities that we'll be providing are delicious hot meals, two snacks a day, uh, we'll also hopefully going to be providing some take-home meals for people that we will be um, suggesting a donation. We cannot charge for those meals, but we will, if someone needs to take those home, we'll be ha glad to do that. 
We'll have structured activities. I am nervous. I don't know why. <laughs> we, <laughs> my legs are just shaking. We will have um, uh, structured <laughs> recreational and, I mean, I'm just thinking I might just fall down here. Actually, <laughs> it, this is, you know, Miss, <laughs> Miss, Miss Big Mouth over here is just a little nervous. Um, anyway, we'll have structured <laughs> activities and um, both individual, like puzzles, crafts. We're hoping to uh, plan a garden and do some various things like that. We'll have healthcare monitoring, education, daily exercise based on their abilities, as well as celebrate holidays and birthdays. And we really want, it's called Caring Hearts and Hands, and we really want our residents or, or our guests to feel like it is their home away from home. Um, each guest will have to have a doctor's okay to attend, so we are preparing some packets to have everyone fill out, and we'll have those ready probably in the next week to 10 days. Um, so at the end, I'll probably be in the back, so if you want to, us to take your name, we can write it down and make sure and get those to you to be completed in time. And we're also finalizing our website, and the, the, our business cards are on the way. I don't expect you to remember this, but our phone number is 651-4787, which is hearts without the vowel, so it's H-R-T-S. Um, we, we've uh, sent everything in to the state and are hoping that we get approval. We have everything basically approved at the building. Our address is gonna be 1009 Northeast 4th Street, which is just east of Eddie's. It's the last building before the neighbors had start. So if, um, and we'll, we're gonna be visiting the doctor's offices and surrounding towns and, and things like that. But we, um, if you have any questions, feel free to, to get a hold of either Mindy or myself. Um, and we appreciate very much your support. Most of all, we will accept your prayers. Um, one day at church, I just said, we needed this about five years ago with my dad, especially, and then my mom had COVID a few years ago, and it's just really difficult to find people to assist you on a temporary basis, and usually there are some good ones out there, but when someone passes away, usually somebody just grabs them up, and so we're hoping to, this is something that we've prayed about. One day, I just sat next to Mindy at church, and I go, Mindy, what do you think about an adult daycare center, and she kind of looked at me, but she has just hung on and she has worked and worked and worked behind the scenes and done so much for me. I would never be able to do it without Mindy. So um, again, if you have any questions, let us know. And uh, we just appreciate your support very much. Thank you. Thank you. God is good. All and all the time. Now, if you'll join me in our call to worship, God has not given us a spirit of fear. But of power, love, and sound mind. Though a thousand fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, with God on our side, it shall not come near us. If we make the Lord our refuge and the Most High our dwelling, no harm will overtake us. If we meditate on God's word, listen to his voice, and obey his commands, then we will enjoy good success, and no weapon formed against us will prosper. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we choose to be bold, strong, and courageous in you and for your kingdom. Give us eyes to see you, ears to hear you, and hearts to love you and hands to serve you. Amen. 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 Go, Chris, go. Let's all stand together and sing, I know whom I have believed.
may be seated. The hymn writer has said something very powerful that in each of our lives, we commit ourselves to God. We ask Him to forgive us. We ask Him to accept us. We ask Him to keep us day by day through our lives. And most of all, we ask Him one day that when we stand before Him, He'll say, welcome. And He's able to do what He promised. We commit ourselves to Him and He delivers. And that's what that song is all about. What God promises, He delivers. God is not a man that He would lie. He's trustworthy. And so each of us has got to come to that place where we hear God for ourselves and commit ourselves into His hands. And then we trust that one day when we stand before Him, we'll stand there forgiven and welcomed and accepted in the Beloved. That's a big deal. We are betting our future on God. And the hymn writer says, He's able to keep what you have entrusted in His hands and deliver what you have asked Him to take care of. What a God we serve, worthy of our praise and honor this morning. Our theme today is conviction, courage, and commitment. And we're going to be looking at the life of Nehemiah as an example of all three of those, divine conviction, courage, and then commitment to accomplish what God asked of him. And I hope that each of us will say, Lord, I want to be like Nehemiah. Bring conviction into my life. Give me the courage to do what you ask and help me to stay committed until it is completed. Join me in the prayer in unison together. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Spirit, please give us the conviction, courage, and commitment to pray, discern, venture, persevere, and succeed. Help us to withstand all opposition, danger, fear, or difficulty, knowing that you are Jehovah Jireh, the God who sees our needs and provides even before we ask. You are our creator, savior, and deliverer. Thank you for giving us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. We choose to seek your face, trust your word, and obey the leading of your Holy Spirit. Please give us the wisdom, strength, and boldness to seek your guidance and then to accomplish your will here in Gaiman, even as it is in heaven Amen. If our ushers will come forward, we'll receive tithe, offering, and faith promise gifts this morning. Our stewardship reflection is truly an amazing insight to the heart of God, but also a warning that we must be careful to obey God, or else we will open up Pandora's box and unleash all kinds of consequences on our lives and families if we are disobedient. Listen to what God shares with King David after he messes up royally and does what God asked each of us never to do. Then Nathan, who was a prophet, said to David, who was king at the time, you are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you all Israel and Judah. And if this, had not, if this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now therefore the sword will never depart from your house because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your own. Lord, we want to thank you this morning for your generosity. Against all odds, you were with David. You helped him kill Goliath, the most fearsome warrior that Israel had ever faced. 
where not a single man was courageous enough to stand up against him. But you gave him victory. And you kept him out of the hand of Saul and all of the army as Saul wanted to kill him. And you made that shepherd boy king. And you prospered him. And you blessed him with an abundance both of wives and family, riches, fame. But against the odds, he chose to disobey you. Chose to have an affair, chose to kill Uriah, chose to make Uriah's wife his wife and unleashed all kinds of destruction on his life and his family and the kingdom that you'd put him in charge of. Please help us to listen to you, to obey you, to follow you. And you say to him, if this had not been enough, I would have given you more. How generous you are, how kind you are to the likes of us. Who are we that you are even mindful of us? And yet you are, and you're good to us, so very good. And we thank you today as we give tithe, offering faith, promise, gifts. We give joyfully, generously, out of gratitude, because you are an amazing God and you are so good to us. We pray that you'll bless the gift and the giver and help us to be good stewards and share your goodness with all we meet. We pray it in Jesus' name and everybody said... Amen. Amen. Stand with me and let us sing the doxology together. be seated. So glad to have our chancel choir with us, looking good under the capable leadership of Sandy Cross and Gayla as accompanist. They are sharing with us a beautiful anthem, God's Peace.
If our children will come forward, we'll have a children's conversation together. Waiting for a few more. We love to see each one with us. Yes, we do. Can we do it? Yes, we can. We are very glad to see you in worship this morning. Welcome. And it is my prayer that you will sense the presence and the power of God. It's always nice to see other Christians, other believers who come to worship but the most important is that we give God praise and honor and that we grow into the men and women he wants us to become. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how important it is for us to have interests that are beyond our own lives. So I'm sure some of you like to dance. Any dancers among us? Any? A couple? Any of you like to play baseball? Basketball, anybody like to go hunting and fishing? Uh huh. These are things we like, but they are things God likes. I won't. You like to hunt and fish? Yeah, I know you do. You, your daddy's son, right there, you see? Jonathan, yeah, I know. But God says there are other things He wants us to be interested in, to do the things that help others and serve others. And today we're going to talk about Nehemiah. Say, Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a man who had his own life, his own interests, and then God started asking him to do some difficult things, dangerous things. And God helped him to get them done. <coughs> so God has plans for your life and my life that are bigger than our own interests. Don't just be interested in yourself. You've got to be interested in what God wants. So here's the scripture Jesus gave us. Seek first the kingdom of God. Say it. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Say it. And all these things will be added unto you. Matthew 6 verse 33. What that says is if you are just living for yourself, you're going to be a loser. 
You've got to have interests that are bigger than yourself. You've got to have God's interests. You've got to seek God's kingdom. And He will give you the other things as well. But if all you want are the things that you like and you want, and you forget God, and you don't do the things of God, you'll end up losing your life. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> I think I've lost attention. Let's pray. Barrett, let's pray. You want to pray for us? Uh -uh. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> Lord, we pray that we can be like Nehemiah, that we can seek your kingdom, and with your help we can get it done. In Jesus' name, and all the children said, you can go back to your seats. There'll be candy waiting for you. <clears throat> Monty, I'm reminded of my principal in high school. Once in a while, when I'd be sent to the office, he'd say to me, What's it this time, Mr. Player? What is it this time? Mm -hmm. I was in trouble quite a bit, I must admit. But God saw me through my troubles and got me on the other side and then taught me how to do kingdom work, not just up to no good work. Thanks be to God, He is patient with us. Join me in our prayer for illumination as we ask God to take the Scriptures and make them come alive to us so that we will hear God speaking to our hearts and to our lives. Living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, and that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Make that prayer true in us, Lord. We're going to look at Nehemiah, and I wish we had enough time to read the whole of Nehemiah, but we don't have that much time, so I'm going to challenge you, Mike, Taylor, and all of you, if you have some time this week, read through that entire prophetic book of Nehemiah so you see the whole story in one reading. We're just going to read a couple of portions, and then I'm going to fill in some of the blanks. But it's a wonderful prophetic book. And here's what's so incredible about it. Nehemiah is ordinary, like you and me, ordinary. Nothing extra special, except that he hears God and he trusts God and he does what God asks him to do. And God performs the impossible with Nehemiah. And that applies to you and me. Don't think because you're ordinary that you can't do something extraordinary for God and with God. God can raise you up and use you and join you with others that can accomplish His kingdom goal right here in Gaiman and even beyond Gaiman, even throughout Oklahoma and maybe even to the uttermost parts of the earth. So we're just going to read two small passages, Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 1 to 6. And then chapter 6, verse 15 and 16. When Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews. And in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, What are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from these, the, those heaps of rubble, burned as they are? Tobiah the Ammonite, who was at his side, said, What are they building? Even a fox climbing up on it would break down their wall of stones. Hear us, our God for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. Give them over as plunder in a land of captivity. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight, for they have thrown insults 
in the face of the builders. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height, for the people worked with all their heart. And now Nehemiah 6, verse 15 and 16. So the wall was completed on the 25th of Elul in 52 days. When all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. This is the word of the Lord. A couple of questions for you to think about as we examine this prophetic letter, this prophetic book, and think about the application in our own lives. What causes you to weep, to mourn, to fast and pray? Do you ever weep, especially spiritually? Are there things that distress you deeply enough that they bring tears to your eyes? Do you ever mourn for what you see going on around you? Do you ever consider fasting and praying and asking God what He would like to do about it? And then number two, what are you motivated by God to ask for and pursue? Has God put something in your heart that is bigger than you, that is beyond your ability, that isn't just your own interest, but kingdom interest? And are you willing to ask God for that and believe that He can accomplish it? And then number three, who can help you accomplish God's plan and purpose? Often God will give you something that's way beyond your ability or your resources. And will you trust God to partner you with others, to raise up others that can help accomplish His plan and purpose? I've heard people say on occasion that God will never give you more than you can bear. And there's some truth to that. But here's the truth. If what happens in your life you try to bear on your own, it will often be more than you can bear. I know of people who have killed themselves because their life is so painful, so unmanageable, and they're trying to bear it on their own. Life can be unbearable. Life can be unmanageable. Life can be tragic. But here's the truth for the child of God. There will never come an assignment or a burden that will be too much for you because you've partnered with God. It is too much for you. There are tasks bigger than you and I can accomplish. There are burdens bigger than we can carry. However, we have a God who says, With me, nothing is impossible. And here's the joy of being a child of God. Hear me loudly and clearly this morning. God does the heavy lifting. Now, He wants you to pull your weight. OJ, you know about that, the fire department. Everybody's got to pull their weight. No passengers. God doesn't want to do for you what you can do for yourself. God wants us to be diligent, God wants us to be industrious. God wants us to be faithful. He takes that seriously. But that's not all there is. You will often be faced with burdens and challenges that are far beyond your means. And this is what God says. I've got it. If you will trust me, if you will obey me, if you will do what I say, then I will give you good success. Not just success, good success. Amazing success. When Joshua entered the promised land, God said, all I want you to do is to be courageous. I want you to be bold and strong. I want you to do what I tell you. And I will give you success and good success. I will deliver what I've promised. Nehemiah is a very interesting study because he relates to you and me right where we are right now. So I want to start with an observation Nehemiah had his own life, his own interests. He had his own job, his own family to care about. Most of us, if we looked at Nehemiah's life, we'll say, listen, his life is full and running over like ours. I mean, who's got time to do things for God? Who's got time to go on some great exploit for God? Come on now. 
We're just trying to pay bills here. We're just trying to raise kids. We're just trying to keep the boss off our back. But for Nehemiah, that was not enough. He had a faith in God. He had a love for God. He carried a burden bigger than his own interests. And I must pause there. If God evaluates your life or my life right now, does his evaluation show that most of our life, if not all of our life, is just our own interests? What benefits us? What concerns us? Or is there a kingdom component? Is there something more and bigger that motivates us, that burdens us, that inspires us to seek God's face? If you'll read that whole letter, you'll see Nehemiah's got a good job. He's a cupbearer for the king. He's most probably well-paid, well-liked, doing well. We all like that. My career's going well. I'm earning pretty good money. I'm taking care of my family. This is nice. But listen to me. It's not enough. It's not enough for God. Just having the good life and getting ahead is not satisfying to God. God wants to make sure that He's included in your life, that His interests are your interests. I'll put it this way. God wants to share His heart with you and me. Does your heart ache for what makes God's heart ache? Does your heart rejoice for what makes God's heart rejoice? So the text tells us that people came back from Jerusalem and Nehemiah checked with them how things going there and they said things are not good in Jerusalem. That whole city is destroyed. The walls are broken down. The gates are burned and wide open. What they're saying is everybody that lives there is totally defenseless. It's a total disaster. This city of God is in ruins. God's interest has totally been demolished. And this cuts Nehemiah to the quick, to the deepest part of his heart. It causes him to weep. It causes him to mourn. You know, like when you've lost a loved one and it hangs on you day after day, like there's just something wrong, something missing, something deeply sad about life? He's mourning. This is just, this is not just bad news. This is wrong. This is terrible. It's haunting him. He mourns. And then he starts to fast, abstaining from food, getting on his knees, seeking God's face, praying, saying, God, I know this isn't what you want. What do you want to do about it? God, this is shameful. So what are we going to do, Lord? When you are brave enough to ask God that, it won't be long and he'll start stirring your heart, your ideas, the plans he has for your life. And guess what, Chris? They'll often be bigger than you imagined. All of a sudden, in the heart of Nehemiah, the cupbearer, he's got a job way bigger than being a cupbearer. Nehemiah, I think I could use you to rebuild the walls. What? Lord, I wasn't volunteering for the job. I was just saying I'm really sad about it. <laughs> you know how we are? We like to point out to God where things are wrong or missing, but then when he kind of rings your bell, you're saying... <clears throat> With Moses, Lord, I, I'm really not gifted in that way, and, and I'd rather not do that. And couldn't you send somebody else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But God says, no, Nehemiah, I'm going to send you, and I'm going to use you. And I'm sure he's thinking, how on God's green earth can I accomplish what nobody else has been able to accomplish? I don't have the money. I don't have the skills. I don't have the people. I mean, I don't have anything except a broken heart. Listen to me. A broken heart in God's hands is enough because he does the heavy lifting. With that broken heart, he's in the presence of the king and one day the king says, hey, Nehemiah, I kind of noticed you a little bit down in the mouth. Something going on? Most people, when they were around the king, they were cheerful, happy, serving him. It's all about the king. But there's something not right about Nehemiah. He said, well, truth be told, king, I am kind of heartbroken 
You know why? Because the city of my God, my people's city, lies in ruins. The walls are broken down. They're defenseless. The gates are burned. It's a total disaster. Listen to me. All of a sudden, the king's heart is softened and burdened with Nehemiah's. And what would you like to do about it? Short answer, I'd like to see the wall rebuilt. I'd like to see the gates restored. I'd like to see that city prosper again. And this is what the king says. I'd like that too. And I'm going to help you do it. What? Yes. What do you need? Well, it's a long list. Make your list. I'll help you. And the king gives him the means to do what he couldn't do on his own. God partners him with a king. From a broken heart to a king. And gives him the materials and gives him an armed escort and gives him permission to go and do what only the king could have granted him to do. And together with God and all these resources, Nehemiah goes and checks things out, doesn't announce it. He's wise. He knows that there are going to be people that he meets who are not going to be too keen mm -hmm. on this assignment, who don't want to help him, who want to hurt him, who want things to stay the same. Listen to me, folks. When you stand up for God and you accomplish his kingdom, there'll be people who will resist you. That's right. They like the status quo. They want things to stay the same. If they're getting benefits out of what's happening, they don't want anything to change. So Nehemiah is, <laughs> is careful to check with God about how am I going to go about this assignment because I'm really not a wall builder. I don't have all the answers, but God, I know you do. So what should I do? So he goes and he makes an assessment. And when he's got all the facts firsthand, then he announces. And now a miracle happens. Not only is the king his partner, but these defeated, scattered remnant, they rally. From being totally fractured and dispersed, they rally and they join him in the effort. And all of a sudden, they start taking vacation time and they start digging into their savings and they start working with a real zeal. They accomplish the rebuilding because their hearts are in it. God moves their hearts. It comes at a price. But it's not just their resources. God has provided resources from the king. And Nehemiah could have been a big deal, a governor, and he could have collected taxes, and he could have made it hard on the people, but he doesn't. He's invested. He sacrifices. He puts his own heart and his own sweat equity into the effort. And it doesn't take long and the opposition comes. And the naysayers are there. And the threats are there. And it gets difficult. Listen, when you serve God, do not surprise, be surprised if things get difficult. When you stand up and you're counted for God and God's kingdom, there will be resistance. There is an enemy. And he doesn't like any one of us standing up and accomplishing the kingdom goals. If you're a non-entity, you might just have plain sailing. He might even give you a push to float down the river of ease. But if you stand up and you commit and you do what God tells you to do, don't be surprised if all of a sudden you start picking up threats and resistance and opposition. But he has the truth. Nehemiah stays prayerful. And he stays committed. And he keeps doing what God told him to do, even though they tried to deceive him and get him sidetracked and finally killed. It gets so bad that the builders have to be armed while they're building because there are people who would kill them to try and stop what God's doing. 52 days later, miracle of miracles, wonder of wonders. The wall that had been in disrepair is rebuilt. And the gates are restored, and the safety of the city has been restored. And all of a sudden, what God is planning is happening. Now, it's not just about walls and gates. It's about gathering people back together. It's about repentance. It's about restoration spiritually. The people have become careless about God and about worship. 
There's apostasy. They have wandered away from what God asked of them. They've married into the pagan culture. They've accepted all of the pagan rituals. And what God has asked Nehemiah to do is not just rebuild the walls, the physical walls, but to help the people come back to God. And they do. They start worshiping again. They start reading the law again. They start obeying God's voice again. They start becoming the people of God again. And who does it? Little old Nehemiah, the king's cupbearer. Little old average Nehemiah who had a heart for God and heard God's voice and trusted God and did what God said. You know why? Because he had conviction. This is not right. God has something that he wants to do. I wonder what it is. And before long, all of a sudden God said, I don't just want to do something. I want to do something with you and through you. And I can accomplish what seems impossible. 52 days later, the impossible became possible. And the scattered people started reassembling and working together. And all of a sudden, listen to this, Jennifer, the surrounding nations lost their confidence because all of a sudden they realized that this wasn't just a bunch of scraggly Jews. This was the hand of the living God. Listen to me today. The living God has called you and me. The living God has filled you and me. The living God has given us a commission, a task, and he's asking us to get on our knees and seek his face and allow the grief that is in his heart to fill our hearts and then to hear the plans and purposes he has. And don't be surprised if you're a part of that. He's not just going to say, oh, there's a big problem and I'm going to send somebody else. He's going to say, how about you? And he's hoping you're going to say, <clears throat> well, I don't know how to build walls. And I don't have any people. And I don't have any money. And I don't know how I'm going to get there. But I'll tell you what, Lord, if you provide, I'll do my best. That's all God needs. Make yourself available. Amen. I'm going to close with a little acronym. God wants you to be fat spiritually. Fat. We don't like fat. We want to lose the fat. No, spiritually, he wants you fat. Faithful, available, and teachable. Will you be fat for God? Faithful? Faithful to what he's called you? Available for whatever the task is? And then teachable. He will teach you what you need to know. He will show you how. He will overcome the opposition. He will do the heavy lifting. But you're going to do some lifting. You're going to do some growing. You're going to do some changing. He will take ordinary like you and me, and he will accomplish extraordinary. And it won't just be about building walls. It will be about changing hearts and bringing people together and ushering in revival. This is what Nehemiah accomplished. What God started in his heart led to repentance, not just in his life, but among the people. They repented of their apostasy. They returned to God. They rebuilt the walls. They were restored. There was revival. Why? Because one man had his heart touched and he wept and he mourned and he fasted and he prayed. And God heard and God saw and God said, watch what I can do. What nobody else has been capable of doing, not, not a one wanted to volunteer to do it, but when God steps in, the impossible becomes possible and don't say well what can I do what can I say how could I do that if you partner with God there will be no burden too much for you to bear there will be no task too difficult to accomplish for with man it is impossible but with God everything and anything is possible let us pray Lord thank you for Nehemiah cupbearer part of the exiles, part of a defeated nation, a servant to the king, a nobody, a man just trying to get along with his life, raise his family, take care of his own business, until you stepped in and said, now wait a minute, there's more to life than just your own interests, Nehemiah. What about my interests? What about the kingdom interests? What about the people of Israel? What about the city of Jerusalem? Are you not sad? at what has happened? Are you not troubled 
that things have gone south? Are you not willing to seek my face and hear my voice and do something? And Lord, thank you that Nehemiah was willing and was obedient and was courageous and was committed. And by the end, you restored the walls, you rebuilt them, you rebuilt the gates, you gathered the people together, you brought revival to a fractured and an apostate nation. Make us such men and women who will be filled with grief and burdened with the brokenness of our world and seek your face and do your bidding so that the kingdom may come here in Gaiman, even as it is in heaven. We cry out in the name of Jesus and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. We'll remain seated as we sing, Jesus Calls Us. Jesus calls us on the tumult of our lives while restless sea. Day by day his sweet voice sounded, saying, Christian, follow me. As of all the apostles heard it by the Galilean lake, turned from home and dwelling kindred, leaving all for Jesus' sake. Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's golden storm, from each idol that would keep us, saying, Christian, love me more. In our joys and in our sorrows, days of toil and hours of ease, still he calls in cares and pleasures, Christians love. calls us by the mercies, Savior, may we hear thy call, give our hearts to life obedience, serve and love thee best of all. If God evaluates your life and mine today, may it be obvious that you love him best of all. May it be obvious that his interests are your interests that you want more than just a good life, a comfortable life. You want more than just getting ahead. You want to see his kingdom come. You want to see his will done. You want to be a part of repenting and rebuilding and restoring what has been lost. In the words of Jesus, go and preach the gospel. Go and teach people how to be my disciples, how to obey all the things that I've taught you. Baptize them. Befriend them, love them the way I have loved you. And lo, I will be with you always. He will do the heavy lifting, I promise you. What seems impossible with God is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. He can do what you thought would never happen. Yes, he can. So I challenge you, don't settle for lukewarmness. Don't settle for a casual Christian relationship. Love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Get on your knees and say, Lord, break my heart with what breaks yours and delight my heart with what delights yours. Make me a part of what you are doing in Gaiman, America. Help me to see what you are doing and join you so that your kingdom comes here even as it is in heaven. We're going to sing together Holy Ground as we pray for the needs of others. And before we pray, I want to say loudly and clearly, Woohoo! Thank you, God, for that three inch rain. Yes. When I came here five years ago, one of the longtime residents said, Pastor, don't pray for three inch rains. We don't get those in Gaiman. Well, with God, we can get them. I've seen, I think that's the third three inch rain in five years. Now, it's not usual, but God can do what is unusual. And I'm very grateful. All of our prayers and thousands beside us asking God for help. And he sent us help. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, living God. God bless our farmers and our ranchers. And thank you for the green pastures. As I went to Tulsa and back on Thursday, all along the way I saw green pastures where before they were dead. And may God restore the cattle herds and give our farmers good harvest 
when it comes to the fall. Thank God for our graduates who have graduated from high school and college. Thank you, God, for every healing that's taken place in our spiritual family. God has been so good to us, and I, for one, am very grateful. Let's sing Holy Ground. Anyone who would like to come forward, you're always welcome to come and kneel here at this chancel rail, this altar, as we humble ourselves before God, as we cry out to Him, as we give Him thanks. That's why it was built, that we may kneel and humble ourselves and seek His face. And He will hear, and He will heal, and He will bless. He is so faithful. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, our Father. I want us to start this morning with just a little silence. What is God saying to you today? What is God trying to share with you and me today? Lord, we join little Samuel in saying, Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. Forgive us when we're so busy and so distracted that we can't hear you speak. You are not silent. You are actively communicating each and every day. Help us to hear your voice and trust you and follow you. Lord, thank you for the rain. In the last six or seven weeks, we've received about five or more inches. Thank you, Lord. We've needed every drop. We are so grateful. And we gladly receive any additional rains that you can send our way, Lord. Our ground is dry and thirsty. Thank you for pastures that are greening up. Thank you for farmers and ranchers that are out there. I saw people busy working their land now that the rains have come. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bless our farmers and bless our ranchers and their families. Lord, be with our panhandle area. It's a productive area. Wind, energy, and oil and gas, and agriculture, and husbandry, and just lots of industries going on here. The trucks are running back and forth on the highways here, wearing them out. Bless Seaboard and all those that they employ and all those they feed. Bless all of the cattle industry, Lord, the highest concentration of cattle right here within a hundred miles of us. Lord, thank you for the productivity of this area. Make us a godly area, a people who seek your face. Help us to be a bright shining light for Kansas, for Colorado, for Oklahoma, for Texas, for Missouri. Lord, make us a people after your own heart. Bless our graduates. Help them to be godly. Help them to surrender their lives to you and follow you. Bless them as they go on with education or careers, as they start families. Bless all our young families and their children, their marriages. We wrap them up in love and prayers. Be with our sick and aging. Be with Warren Peterson as he's recovering from his fall and his fractured pelvis. Thank you for the care he's received. We wrap him up in our love and prayers. Be with Cheyenne Woods who's undergone pretty strong chemo treatments, and now they're going to look at surgery, Lord, just a young adult. Be with Cheyenne. We wrap her up in love and prayers today. Be with Rowan as they're treating his brain cancer and his lung cancer, Lord. Thank you for the good report that the tumors have shrunk and that his health looks promising. Be with the family of Tim Kelly. Not Kelly. 
Tim Keller, who passed away at 72 years of age, a great champion for the kingdom of God. Be with him as they grieve his loss. Thank you for the ministry he had there in New York City and the surrounding areas and throughout our nation. Raise up more and more champions for your kingdom, Lord. Lord, be with all of our disaffiliated churches as they're looking for pastors and stepping into your preferred future. We don't want business as usual. We want your kingdom vital and robust and growing. Raise us up, Lord. Make us faithful. Hmm. Pray that our worship will be pleasing to you, that you will leave each day that we gather like this and say, I like what I see. Make us a people surrendered and obedient to you, singing your praise, trusting you, working for you, as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have a wonderful YouTube music video prepared this morning. The Prodigal Story by Corey Asbury. Every one of us are prodigals. Every one of us have got to return. And here's the good news. Stephanie, the prodigal father is waiting to run and meet us as we make our way back home. Let's enjoy this together. If you know the word, sing along the prodigal song. Woohoo! Stand with me. If that didn't get your heart pounding, then I'm going to have to take your pulse because I think you're dead. God loves you. God has plans and purposes that will surprise you and thrill you and that will accomplish good for the world. One of the things Nehemiah says to God at the end of the journey, God, remember us and the good that you had for us. God, remember us. When we repent, when we rebuild, when we restore, when we revive, God remembers and the goodness of God starts flowing like it should have before we messed it all up. Receive God's blessing as we leave worship and as we go into the mission field to occupy and shine the Christ light. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.